The Salopian Mixture with Michaela Wild and Simon Berry. Bringing you Shropshire's best new music. To another episode of the Salopian Mixtape. I'm Michaela Wiles. And I am Simon Berry. And we are bringing you the finest music and music related things from Shropshire uh, right into your ear holes. And we're in a fabulous location. Uh, we've come into Shrewsbury. We've gone up a bit of a hill. Um, well, actually, technically, we went. We drove up a hill and then we walked down a little bit. And then we've come <laughs> down a set of stairs into the basement of a very cool building. There's a little stage set up behind me. This is so cool. We've literally walked in here and gone, we love this place. We are in the downstairs of Oil, and um, it's a venue that hosts lots of music. We'll tell you a little bit more about that later on in the show. Um, and I'm really hoping, I'm keeping everything crossed, that we might be able to do some stuff here in the future. Oh, yeah. because I'd love to have some live music nights in here. Heck yeah. It's so nice down here. Um, I was in here on Friday, but upstairs, not downstairs. And I feel like I should have come downstairs because it's so lovely here. Um, yeah. But coming up on today's show, you're going to hear from a uh, guy who organises gigs across Shrewsbury. and Very interesting gigs. Very. Very different, very interesting, very unusual. Uh, tapping into kind of the link between music and mental health as well. So a fascinating conversation on the way. Certainly is. But also we're going to be sharing with you the finest music that we have had sent to us at the salopianmixtape.com. And uh, we're going to start with, however, our release of the series. Yeah, so every week we're bringing you a track from the album. It will be an album or an EP each series that we are celebrating. And for this series, it is Angels and Demons from Adele and Andy. And we're a few weeks into this now. And we've experienced every week hearing amazing music from them. And not just that finding out a little bit more about them as a duo because not only do you get to hear music from them you get to hear a little bit more about them behind the scenes but if this is the first time you're listening to us there's something else that's exciting that comes alongside being a release of the series indeed you can go into a couple of record shops in the county you can go to Tubeway 2 in Bridge North and Spinning Around Records in Wellington where you can buy a physical copy of Angels and Demons by Adele and Andy. They have, uh, those two places have worked with us in collaboration and they just want to celebrate local music, which is exactly what we want to do. So if you like this that you are about to hear, go and check out the, uh, the the physical release in those two record shops in Wellington and Bridge North and you can buy it and own it and own a piece of Shropshire history. Absolutely. So I think we should hear, so we've heard lots of tracks from this album so far. I think we need to hear the opening track and I will let Adele and Andy tell you a little more about it. What are your favourite songs on the album and why? So very different than you. Uh, my favourite is Ghost of the Past by, by a Country Mile. Um, because I think the lyrics in it are, um, I think I think it takes a lot to condense the lyrics. Um, I think the the arrangement is wonderful. Um, I love all the bits that Dave Hammond uh, put on the album as well. Um, absolutely incredible in terms of harmonica and the Hammond organ. Um, I just love the track. sky all above me it shivered in the cold it paused to catch its breath and dropped a blanket on the road I felt that someone close to me a memory from the past something shook me up and it stopped me in my tracks what I saw before me something on Ground. My eyes were playing tricks on me, so I stopped to look around. It made no sense to me at all, the footprints in the snow. At first I was so damn confused, but now I think I know.
counting in the evenings I cried I thought you left me The spirit put to rest Thought I walked the lonely road You carried me and said you never leave me was the fabulous Adele and Andy. They are the artists behind our uh, release of the series for this series from their album, uh, Angels and Demons. It's the opening track, Ghosts of the Past. And as you heard, really interesting as well because it starts off with kind of the sound effects. You've got the crunchy walking on the ground. Uh, I loved the harmonica action in that track and the slidey, gu- slidey guitars. They <laughs> amazed me so much that I struggled to get my words. Out. I mean, you said it in a way that was very, very, Cr- like country, I nearly said crunchy. Crunchy is because of the ground. Yeah. Sliding guitars. Slide guitars. Them guitars are sliding. Proper stomper. <laughs> I yeah. absolutely love this album. So if this is the first time that you're hearing tracks from it, listen back to previous podcasts from this series. You'll be able to hear more from Adele and Andy, more from that album, and we'll bring you another track next week. And we still haven't actually selected the next release of the series for no. next series. So if you've got an EP on the way, an album on the way, and you think, do you know what? Releasing it and talking about it with us for the space of like eight episodes might be be a good sell for the whatever you're releasing <laughs> get in touch and let us know go to salopiumixtape.com or slip into our dms <laughs> and uh um, yeah get in touch with us we might be able to feature your release as our next release of the series exactly now we are uh michaela wild and simon berry hello uh, from the salopium mixtape we and are. we are currently in the basement of oil which is oh. And, and there's, there's works going on outside, it must be. Yeah, there, there is a little bit of work going on <laughs> on the street, which is kind of dribbling down to us. But um, it's a wonderful place to be. And it's going to be host to a band in about a week's time from now um, that we're going to play for you right now. I'm really, really, really excited to play you a song by a band called Drave. I love this. I pressed play on it uh, a couple of weeks ago and went, I, I, I think if this was released in like the early 80s, late 70s, they would be a cult icon by now because it is just like the ultimate sort of post punk throwback. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, so you can listen to it now. This is Drave and keep telling yourself things they are h jasper and joe uh they describe themselves as goffy post-punk uh from medieval shrewsbury um conceived in 2023 over a shared love of sad stuff and bands from joy division to molchat doma a great live by the way uh and dry cleaning and they are superb i'm very very happy i'm guessing happy. that's a band called dry cleaning not going to the dry cleaning like dry cleaners with their clothes i mean a bit of both <laughs> <laughs> who, who doesn't like it's a shared cleaning. love of having clean clothes <laughs> exactly so just listen. love them clean shirts <clears throat> love them clean shirts uh, so if you alright clean shirt alright clean shirt uh, <laughs> so this then is Drave keep telling yourself things Yes. 
I like to imagine that it was a, a kind of amalgamation of the name Dave and being brave. So like a brave Dave would be Drave. Uh, keep telling <laughs> yourself things when you upload your music to us. And if you'd like to do that, anything goes on this podcast, by the way. We love everything. Uh, go to the... Everything. Uh, go to the salopiumixtape.com and share your music with us. And um, when you do that, you can share some gigs that are coming up. And Simon mentioned that this band are going to be performing exactly where we are very, yeah. very soon. Uh, we'll remind you of that in just a second. But also, their fun fact that they've shared with us, because we do have for a fun fact, is that um, we're actually secretly happy. Oh, <laughs> That's so nice you might be thing. listening to that thinking, oh, are they, are they okay? Do they need a hug? Come on, come on, guys. Dave. Guys, do you need a little bit of a cutch? Do you need a Dave Brave kind of hug? <laughs> Dave Brave kind of hug, please. No, they're actually quite happy. So don't don't fret about them, but do go and find out about them and be a fan of theirs online. Um, they've got a couple of tracks out now and both are equally brilliant. I'm going to say that. Uh, we've played you one you can listen to the other there we may well end up playing you another one in the future let's face it probably you'll hear the other one in a couple of weeks time yeah probably (laughs) they they are Drave then and they're going to be playing um, Oil 17th of June so yep right where we are right now and uh, then doing a one hand clapping gig at the English Bridge Workshop on the 19th of June which I think I may well be going to. Speaking of which, nice little throw ahead because we're more organised than we used to be. Uh, You will hear a little more if you go, what on earth is one hand clapping? All will become clear next week because we will be talking all one hand clapping. That's the sound of attempt. Can you not do do it? it? That's a really good noise, isn't it? Someone sample that for a song, please. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so you will hear more about one hand clapping this time next week. But for now, let's get back to some more fabulous music. We're gonna head to Telford for an artist called Casey. This is Falling. Break 
breaking down every wall And you know how I feel, words can't explain Been in love before, but this is not the same And your cheeky smile, it only seems for me And my heart just breaks, cause you're my everything I was falling by Casey straight out of Telford. Uh, she says, uh, I'm a singer who loves making pop and folk pop music and also loves loads of harmonies. I love loads of harmonies too. So, I mean, you, you have me at harmonies. I'm there for you. <laughs> uh, also, the fun fact, which you can um, put on your upload to the com whenever you send music to us. We do have a little box that says, Tell us something about yourself that nobody really knows. Uh, Casey says, I drink an absurd amount of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Which, as as like fun facts go, that is, um, that is interesting. It does make me wonder what is uh, an absurd amount of mil- milk. Strong bones. But is it like uh, five litres? Is that absurd? <laughs> or is 20 litres absurd? <laughs> What is it? I don't know. I don't. I don't know what is <laughs> absurd. Because to me, as a cheeky little vegan, drinking just a small amount of milk is absurd. <laughs> so anything beyond that is too much. For you. For me. Whereas there's, do you know what? I remember when I was pregnant uh, that there were days where I was like, nothing would quench my thirst more than like a pint of milk. <laughs> That must have been the, the needs of the calcium, and that's probably why I lost a tooth in the process of pregnancy. But I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't get enough of the stuff. So, Casey, I'm absolutely with you. The Salopian mixtape with Michaela Wall and Simon Berry. You are listening to the Salopian Mixtape with Simon Berry and the Kayla Wild. And, uh, well, one of the reasons we wanted to start this podcast, and it was a big thing for us, is that our passion is all types of music. And if you ever got into an in-depth conversation with Simon and I, you would discover that our musical tastes are 
so vast and bizarre and basically I I will allow myself to just listen to anything and just decide whether I like it or not. It doesn't matter. I'm I, I'm not about the labels when it comes to music. And what we wanted to do with this podcast was to have the opportunity to share the sensational music that's being made right here in Shropshire that ranges from classical music to jazz to folk music to like happy hardcore to thrash metal to screamer we want to reminisce and go back to our youth we want to go into the world of alternative obscure stuff but also the sweetest pop we want to have you know the the coolest indie music anything and everything will go as long as it's flying the flag for Shropshire and alongside that one of the things we wanted to do was champion the venues the people the promoters who are allowing for those opportunities to branch into the different genres and shine a spotlight for Shropshire for different types of music and I will say that the chat we've had for this week really does go into that realm of the alternative and we had such a great conversation yeah definitely because we we are aiming to have to bring together Shropshire's music industry from the very beginning of I want to pick up a guitar and or piano and play to here we are this is a massive song I'm going to be like be playing on a stage here and there that is what we want to do and somebody that we spoke to this week is Chris Taylor uh, from SY Gigs who he is trying to put people literally on stages and he does it in an interesting space a couple of interesting spaces so we spoke to him at Shrewsbury Unitarian Church right in the middle of Shrewsbury on the high street and it's kind of one of those places that you forget exists until <laughs> yeah, you go in. Yeah, I've walked in. past it so many times and I do think, I think I've walked past it and gone, oh, that's an interesting door because it's it's like a bright red door. It was a red door, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so you walk past the door and you go, oh, but <laughs> until you walk in and you go, wow, this is vast in here and beautiful uh, by the way, you can see some of the gorgeous stained glass in mm. some of the videos we're going to post online if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, I'd like to have a look. You get the chance to on our socials. Indeed. So if you uh, go to thesilopianmixtape.com, you can find out all sorts. But you can also listen to our chat with Chris Taylor from SY Gigs at Shrewsbury Unitarian Church. The Salopian Mixtape. Michaela Wow and Simon Berry. We're in an absolutely lovely venue, aren't we? It's a beautiful place. We are in the middle of Shrewsbury Town Centre at the Unitarian Church, which is a wonderful place. Uh, great acoustics, and it feels like a great place that you could put gigs on. That brings us beautifully on to having a chat with Chris because you put some gorgeous looking gigs on in venues like this. Tell us more about SY Gigs. Yeah, good morning both. Um, so yeah, SY Gigs um, has been uh, happening now in the town for probably, well, nearly three years now. Um, and I suppose they, the whole concept really came about ultimately from a desire for wanting to see alternative music in the town. I mean, I've always followed music gone to gigs, but I always found it very difficult to actually find that kind of alternative up and coming music in Shrewsbury. So um, it seemed a really logical um, step to make uh, because I've been doing a little bit of promoting with other people um, that I'd actually, yeah, maybe have a look at a few venues in Shrewsbury because you will probably know trying to find venues in Shrewsbury is really difficult if you want to put gigs on as a promoter, you know, we're really restricted. Um, so yeah, I um, had a few conversations and ultimately um, landed with using um, two churches ultimately that I currently do, um, which is here at the Unitarian. So Unitarians have been wonderful in supporting it uh, as a concept. And secondly, we use uh, St Altman's across the way. What is it about churches that you think makes such a special gig, make it, makes it a little bit different? Yeah, well, I was always, I mean, if you've been to lots of concerts and gigs over the years, you probably always remember the ones that are in unusual spaces. Um, so I've always wanted to put something on that was a little bit more special than just the music. It's about the environment um, as well. And the resonance, you know, and you've already touched upon that, Simon, you know, that the sound here in the Unitarian is really special. So you can do acoustic gigs here as well as amplified. Um, 
So it's about the space, it's about the resonance, it's about the community, um, and certainly both St Altman's and the Unitarian, if you think about those church spaces that have always been at the heart of the community, they're probably not used as much, but they actually serve a great purpose. So it seemed a nice fit to come and use the church spaces and actually, at the same time as putting the music on there, it's actually introducing lots of people to Shrewsbury who have lived in Shrewsbury all their lives, but they haven't actually walked through the door. So, you know, I don't know how many times you've been in the Unitarian, you walk on this street virtually <laughs> weekly, and you walk past the door, and you really don't know what's behind that door. So to have that um, is a real pleasure, actually, when you see people come to the gigs. And, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about the lighting and the effects. You know, it's a really, really special experience. Yeah, because when you walk along the, the main road here, you... It, it can, this church can just kind of get caught up within, you see the beautiful windows, but mm. it can just get caught up into, you know, the row of shops and buildings along here. Yeah. Um, it's not until you come through the doors, you're like, oh, wow, look at all of this behind here. It's a bit mm. like a TARDIS, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's exactly that. I mean, I used to put gigs on with a couple of friends um, at the Whiteman, if you remember the Whiteman, which yeah. is just mm. around the corner, um, which has now been turned into a um, homewares uh, store. Um, and that was very similar. You know, it was an incongruous entrance it was literally a door off the square you went through that door and it opened up into a temperance hall and it's very similar with the churches you know you walk past those spaces um unaware really of their beauty their history so i'm really kind of spinning that around i suppose using those key features uh, but bringing really really interesting international alternative music to the town which we don't have you know there's lots of music that's currently happening lots of singer songwriters come to shrewsbury Lots of folk comes to Shrewsbury, obviously, with a folk festival. And I'm really respectful and I like folk and all of those genres. Uh, but what we don't have is some really interesting electronic music, post-classical music, jazz. We have, obviously, the jazz network that does gigs up at the Hive. But we're not doing as much contemporary, in my view, that I'd like to see. So, you know, you mix all of that together and it's quite a nice cocktail, really. Definitely. Is. What sort of impact do you think you've had on Shrewsbury? in terms of the, mm. the music scene? Well, I'd like to think it's positive. <laughs> um, I mean, it's grown, obviously, from, you know, really struggling, I suppose, like lots of promoters, to make it financially work, you know, because ultimately it's just me. It's completely DIY. certainly rely on a number of volunteers, and I've got a really great... Um, sound engineer in in Stavros who is kind of my right hand man and you know if it wasn't for Stavros and Opus Media uh, Productions you know these gigs probably wouldn't happen so you know I think the impression that it's making at this moment it's creating a community and one thing that I've probably not touched upon up to this point is you know the mental health aspects to SY gigs you know there were two real reasons that I wanted to start it <laughs> And the, the theme to it was letting the light in. So it was one, letting the light in on alternative music, a number of those genres. And secondly, letting the light in. Music's always been a mainstay for my mental health. So I've struggled desperately with depression over the years and anxiety. And, you know, I've always kind of looked to music to ground me, to give me that security. So I really wanted this season, the second season we're into now, to very much be about bringing the community together, you know, going on an exploration of stuff. So they have to trust the promoter, and that's a big key thing here, you know, because they're not going to know some of these artists. They're going to know the genres and what the ethos is, but it's about trusting the promoter in his selection. So it's a little bit of letting the light in on that side of things, but also importantly it's about giving people the sense of their own worth and improving their mental health within that musical space which i think is a really important lots of us have that issue those issues i suppose i've just been very transparent and open about my particular mental health and i'm hoping that that again helps other people to maybe share some of their own stories um over the time of the, uh, the seasons I suppose that makes it, you, you must be very, very close to the music that you select, the mm. music that you bring to these gigs then. Um, is it a difficult process for you to curate what you want to put on or is it quite a cathartic thing for mm. you because of what it represents with your mental health? No, I mean, I, th I, mean oh, I think all the artists that we've had, you know, have fully understand, understood the messaging that's gone along of the mental health aspect. You know, lots of artists in a similar way, you know, suffer from mental health. You know, they may not expose themselves 
in the open to it, but they're really, really supportive and they understand the message behind it. So, you know, it's always a challenge when it comes to trying to find the artist that you want. And it takes, you know, some of these gigs have taken three years to come to fruition, you know, and I often yeah. talk about the Shabaka Hutchins gig, who's now known as Shabaka, who's a really, you know, famous uh, flautist now, but used to be a saxophone player with a number of bands. And, you know, he performed his very first um, flute show here in Shrewsbury with a harpist, you know, if you go and look where he's playing now, he sells out the Barbican, you know, three nights in succession. So, you know, he literally was in, I was in contact with him, knowing that he was kind of leaving the saxophone behind and said, look, you know, do you fancy maybe trialing that in Shrewsbury? And, you know, probably take two, took two, two years for that to come to fruition. So you certainly have to keep revisiting. You have to explore your own desires of the musicians you want to bring. But there's certainly been, interestingly, an aspect where, you know, some of the audience, and we've obviously created that community, and there's been friendship groups that have been created, which is wonderful through that, you know, have come forward with suggestions. So we've brought a number of artists through, through those relationships and those recommendations. Um, but it certainly takes time to find the right artist, musically, but also understands the concept for the community here and what we're trying to achieve through SY Gigs. Is there any uh, sort of set criteria that you have for those artists? Um, well, yeah, the alternative side is really important to me. You know, I don't want to repeat what's already, in my view, an abundance of stuff in Shrewsbury. You know, I think we've got lots of great, talented singer-songwriters in Shrewsbury, but we don't have a great number of electronic composers who are working. We don't have too many post-classical composers who are working in Shrewsbury or on the edge of the contemporary side. We don't have too many electronic jazz trios playing in Shrewsbury so and the same way with experimental music you know so those are the things that I want to bring um, and I don't really want to repeat what's already available you know if we go back to what my you know key um, ethos is it's about trying to bring stuff internationally to Shrewsbury that I was having to go out the town to see. Perfect. So it's kind of just, it's plugging all of those gaps in genre that you don't get to experience. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, but you know, I mean, I could go off any way, you know, with it. Um, you know, it's about introducing people to new genres for sure. But, you know, what I'm not going to bring, although I love certain genres myself, I'm not necessarily going to go down the hip hop route or I'm going to, you know, maybe start bringing guitar indie bands into church spaces because... You know, I start, said, said earlier on, the reason I chose the spaces is because of the ambience, you know? And I really want to be respectful to the custodians of the church and making sure that the artists I bring suit the space. You know, it's about people coming into the space here and literally not getting distracted, which I think you sometimes often see in lots of venues in Shrewsbury and in pubs because there's somebody in the corner who's had too much to drink. Mm -hmm. Or there's somebody behind the bar who's not being respectful of the artist who's playing, who's throwing glasses about. You know, this the is coffee about... machine's usually the one. If there's a coffee <laughs> no, machine yeah. and there's milk frothing, I, that's <laughs> happened when I've been playing somewhere before. You're just about to start singing, then you hear, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, that, and, and you know, and I experienced exactly that. You know, I went to a gig recently at one of the venues in the town, and it was exactly that, and it just annoyed me. Yeah. You know, so I want the artist to have that audience focused on the music. I mean, we run bars at the venues, you know, um, got no issue with people having a drink, absolutely. But whatever, please be respectful to the artists, give them that time to explore their genre with you. And hopefully when you leave here, you will have found a new artist and hopefully be really passionate about maybe exploring that genre. Bringing you Shropshire's best new music, the Salopian Mixtape. You'll hear a little bit more from Chris very, very soon. But after we spoke to him, literally, the, like, the first thing that Simon and I said to him was, <laughs> oh, my goodness, after hearing about the kind of music that you're putting on, a artist band collective come straight to mind that we felt like he needed to hear that potentially should be on one of these stages when he's putting on these alternative nights because the music by this band group creative collective setup <laughs> um which is one person and additional people depending on what the, yeah. the kind of uh, 
the lay of the land is, I yeah. think. Um, but yeah, every time we've heard their music, I just feel like they fit the brief just to a T. And it, it, this music is like a soundscape that just... I'm in awe of. It just keeps on giving. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So yeah, it was literally the the idea in both mine and Michaela's minds when talking to Chris. So we're going to play it for you now. Uh, you have heard it here on the show before, but it's so good that we're going to play it for you again. Uh, this is then the Death Particle and O oh Grave, where is thy victory?
was O Grave, Where Is Thy Victory by the Death Particle, who is Harold P. Catty from Ellesmere, and uh, working with him on that is Adam Betts on drums, Christina Ebert, Danny Flam, and Christi- Christian Raphael Duke. Um, so it's just beautiful music being made by the Death Particle, and you can find out more um, by searching for them on... Bandcamp certainly they've got that is from their EP called A Dance Macabre, uh, so go and check them out because I love them. I think just something so unusual, interesting, and yeah, just very, very, very special. So um, hopefully, Chris will be listening to this podcast and he'll go. Oh, oh I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> He's featured on it and go yes. I think we need them to be involved with... Oh, Simon's having a little swig of his drink. Mm, nice sorry. sound of ice. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> I think they need to be involved with one of these amazing um, live setups that he's got going on. So let's find out a little bit more about them. When it comes to gigs that you've got coming up, what mm. do you have? So on the 28th of June, we've got group listening. Uh, so group listening are a, a couple of chaps uh, by the name of Stephen Black and Paul Jones. Um, And they're from Cardiff. Uh, They've done lots of musical collaborations over the years. Um, And they play a very ambient jazz. So that's actually part of the Shrewsbury um, Music Festival. So I kind of collaborate a little bit with uh, St. Orton's Church. We're putting some events on. So that's 28th of June. And we've got support. And I always try, wherever possible, is to bring a local artist in to support the main artist. Um, and again, you know, always interested in listening and hearing from people who have a real alternative edge to their musicality. You know, always um, welcome any suggestions on that. So we've got Basmatron, who is that artist, who's uh, again a friend who's uh, a promoter in his own right. So he'll be uh, certainly doing some uh, jazz um, alternative, a little bit of flute work, hopefully. Uh, really looking forward to that. And then 24th of July, we've got... Greg Fote, who is a well-renowned pianist, a jazz pianist, who's done lots of collaborations, and he's coming with a drummer. He had an album out this year um, from a band called Coco Rocco, um, which is really a kind of fusion um, of Afrobeat. So he's the drummer. Um, Greg will bring his synthesizers along as well, play the piano, so that makes a really nice sound. Um, and they'll be supported by Ocean Ivy. So Ocean Ivy... Um, Again, has a local connection, so we run the bars here um, through uh, Glue Glue. So Robin from Glue Glue um, runs that business, and they put a lovely bar on and make a contribution, actually, which I should say, to the gigs, because, you know, it's a not-for-profit model. You know, I'm not making money. I'll just make that very clear. <laughs> it's not about making money from these concerts at all. As long as I cover the costs, I'm very happy. So Glue Glue make a contribution to each of those gigs. And his son, Owen, uh, is basically the drummer in Ocean Ivy, so they're going to be supporting. So again, that's a nice local connection, and that's a a really interesting kind of jazz collective as well. So that'll be up at the big church, as we call it now, (laughs) which is St. Altman's. Um, So those are the next two. And then I've got uh, from Copenhagen, well, from New York, originally from Copenhagen, I've got Clash Jensen coming, who's a cellist, who does a lot of looping, electronic looping. That'll be in September. Then I've got a South Korean flautist who's coming um, in October. And then in November, we've got Adam Scrimshire, who's got his own record label down in London, brings a lot of uh, jazz bands, funk bands through, and he will be playing here an album called Autumn Lovers, which will be very opportune. It sounds like it's an eclectic mix from yeah. around the world. That's amazing. Yeah. A yeah. brilliant yeah. eclectic mix. I mean, do, what do the artists make of these venues as well? Because these can't be normal places that they're playing in. Have you had interesting feedback when uh, you've had performers come and play in, in some of your venues? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a real compliment that um, I think most of the artists that have played here have obviously shared their experience. So we've had other artists then have then subsequently followed suit and come and had a conversation about playing here. So, you know, we haven't probably had as many international artists this year, but last year, you know, we had quite a few from America, New York, Los Angeles. Um, And, you know, the message gets back there, which is, you know, you kind of think there's that much music in the world, but surely it doesn't transcend. Um, But it seems to. So, you know, I'm really quite excited for season three already. you know, we're certainly going to be traversing the globe with a few artists. I didn't mention actually um, the one the one concert with uh, which is uh, Dustin Bake, who's the flutist, 
flautist uh, playing actually will have an Australian electronic composer coming to support her as well so oh, cool. so it's really yeah pretty yeah. diverse see people from all over the place yeah. in a church up your road which is as you say that that's the kind of thing bringing them alternative music that you want to hear mm. that's that's missing so that you don't have to go here there and everywhere to go and to go and find it which is a fabulous thing mm. is there anyone that you want to bring in Deferent, like desperately want to bring like, <laughs> yeah. I, got, I, say, I got asked exactly the same question and there is there is a German composer actually an electronic pianist I don't know if anybody's heard of him called Nils Fram um, and he's an artist that I followed for a long time um, been to Berlin a place called Funkhaus which is an East German radio station that's been converted into a concert hall and he's a very experimental very charismatic um, composer um, but he kind of sells out the Barbican um, and he's got a tour coming up this summer his tickets went on sale two years ago which sold out so oh, wow. the chance of getting Nils here is small but you'd have said you know if you went and looked at Shabaka now would I get Shabaka back I still think I can get him back but if you look at his um, status now internationally you'd probably say there's no way he'd come to Shrewsbury I mean we had Tara Clark and Trio who were up at St Orton's the big church uh, two weeks ago, lovely, lovely concert. Again, they're making big, big waves. Did a session at Maida Vale for Giles Peterson quite recently. So, you know, you never say never, but you obviously have to have aspirations to bring the artists. You know, why else am I doing it, really? Because you could argue, is it helping my mental health? You know, <laughs> <laughs> trying to sell tickets um, for some of these events, you know. But, um, but I think it is helping. I, th I think it helps me personally from mental health perspective because you know it allows me to share quite openly the struggles that I have you know um, and ironically I think that's really helpful you know everybody has to do some talking therapy some people prefer to do it behind closed doors with a therapist I just prefer to do it on the stage introducing obviously what we've got for the evening and telling people a little bit about my mental health so you know that's just the way I choose to do it and do you get much reaction from people talking about mental health yeah, for sure, yeah. I mean, I've had lots of, obviously, side conversations, but I think there's lots of people, including the artists, that fully understand the challenges of modern-day living and mental health, you know. Um, this isn't something that's just cropped up for me. I've had it probably, and when I've explored, that's probably been there since my childhood, you know. Um, I've got kind of coping strategies, and it's great to talk to other people as to what their strategies are. It's too easy sometimes to reach for the magic pill, I think that's always the easy option in life, isn't it? You know, just give me a pill to fix the problem. But it doesn't actually, it's just a sticking plast and you've got to really explore that and it's just the way that I choose to do it. I think there's so many people that have got so many struggles. You say it's modern day living, isn't mm. it? And um, mm. having, having music as a, a fabulous way to escape as well, I think is, um, is a glorious thing. And if you can come to a venue, have beautiful lighting, yeah. hear amazing music from somewhere far flung, yeah. that you can just go, oh, I'm going to lift myself up and take myself away to somewhere else now. It's, um, it's, a, it's a great chance, I suppose, to reconnect. And yeah, and yeah it's, a, it's a, a beautiful thing. Having had kind of 40 years service working in, in the public sector and, and having those challenges mentally, you know, um, certainly the anxiety levels that we all go through in a business uh, perspective, you know, it's been incredibly empowering actually to do what I'm doing, uh, to be able to talk quite openly because when you're in a workspace and you talk openly about your mental health, then in my view, when you're in management as I was, um, it doesn't particularly reflect well on you the employer won't say this of course but it probably won't reflect well on you in your career pathways um, so to come out of that space and to be able to talk quite openly is really quite empowering and I think you know we have to I know I'm going down the mental health aspect but we have to get employers being a little bit more honest it's very easy to kind of signpost people to go and have a chat to this counsellor but they've got to own a little bit because where does that stress get created it doesn't get necessarily always created by the individual themselves it's what managers are asking them to do so all expected to do a lot more a lot faster a lot quicker but we have to be a bit more respectful of one another and I think again you know if we can get that messaging out as part of SY gigs add that music in that whole experience create that community then yeah I think it's quite exciting and hopefully it will continue to last get your music heard at the salopiummixtape.com
We've only got time for one more tune for this week, but if this hasn't been quite the full fix that you needed of brilliant music made right here in Shropshire, we can listen back to so many podcasts. We've had a whole host of amazing ones so far, even if we do say so ourselves, but that's not because of us. It's because the music has been banging. Exactly. So if you are enjoying what you're listening to, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this podcast with everybody that you know, because... We are just wanting to raise up the musicians who are making brilliant music here in Shropshire. And tell us your thoughts as well. Like, yeah. if you're thinking, if it, good, bad, the ugly, whatever, whatever, <laughs> because actually your feedback will help us to do everything we can to make this show even better. So, like, let us know what you think. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a collaborative thing. The whole thing is a collaborative thing. So if you have any suggestions or... Uh, words of wisdom whatever it may be then feel free to uh, send us a message you can find us on all social media all the good ones and the bad ones as well and just drop us a DM and if you are making music or you know someone who's making music go to the salopian mixtape.com that is where you can submit your music for us to listen to and then potentially play on a future episode of the salopian mixtape now i feel like we've saved a fabulous tune for you for the end of the podcast for this week it comes from an artist from shrewsbury who is called ez and um we absolutely love the work from ez over the years he sent music to us and said can I send you this? Will you play this? <laughs> There's been times when we've had to go, we'd like to, but we can't. No, Happily, no, no, we no, can no. play this one. Yeah, we can. But he's extremely talented, and I feel like with every tune he brings out and he releases, um, his musical confidence seems to be growing. And I hope that, because he can be... I feel he's been some, somewhat self-deprecating when yes. he's sent music in the past. I would agree kind with of that. talks things down a little bit. Yep. Um, I'm hoping that he, his confidence is growing and that he is becoming, you know, a, a little more forthright with the music he's making because it's very, very good. You thought I was going to swear then. I saw I you. I did. I did. I, <laughs> I thought you were going to swear. I but, really did. But, it was but, there. Yeah, it is incredibly good music that is being created by Ez. Um, I might be wrong. I'm not wrong. But this song is wrong. <laughs> Before you come another victim When you stop forgiving Then you're right off the given Now we miss you I'll be missing you Now we missing you But I ain't listen I'm indifferent Now I can feel the distance in our souls
was Ez with the track Wrong. Love that. I almost went for an old school thing of saying that's easy. Uh, but no, it's Ez. Um, and that's wrong. He lived in Shrewsbury his entire life, if you don't consider the first 14 years or so. Uh, well, it counts. Uh, you Shrewsbury guy, uh, you're in Salopian now, and you are being featured on the Salopian mixtape, so you can never, ever say that you're not a Salopian. <laughs> we can't wait to hear more music from Ez. Um, he's very talented. As I said before, he's a bit self deprecating. He did say when he sent this music, he'd say, uh, as an artist, I'm absolutely, positively, 100% okay at what I do. Um, I'm going to say the track's called Wrong. You are wrong. You are fabulous at what you do. And we can't wait to hear more from you. Uh, thank you for spending some time with us on this podcast. Um, we've been very lucky to be in a fabulous location. Uh, so we've been in oil, in the downstairs of oil. And um, this is such a cool space. And I'm, I'm going to say again, because I'm hoping if I just say this out loud, I'm like sending it into the universe. Yeah, just keep on saying it. We, we need to try and get something going on in here. Yeah, we'll get some sessions done. See if done. we can get a live session in here because yeah. it's so cool. Uh, but they've got loads of stuff, um, communal music that you can come and get involved with. They've got um, a basement jam session that happens every Thursday night from 8.30. Um, every last Tuesday of the month, they do an unplugged acoustic jam night. So you can mm. just come down and, and have a bit of a jam unplugged, which is very, very cool. Uh, once a month on a Monday, they do Going Underground, which is all for up and coming bands. So that's a great chance if you know if you haven't been out and performed somewhere before as a band great chance to get yourself on a stage and it's such a cool little stage in here I absolutely love this yeah. and um, they've got something on the uh, the first Sunday of the month they do vinyl destinations so um, you can bring your own records and just share some great music with people so if you haven't come and discovered oil yet come and do so um, what is this road called? Castle Street. Castle Street. There we go. Because of the because of because of the castle. It's just up the road from the <laughs> castle. Of the castle. Yeah. My brain was going. I, I I can't remember. Walk up from the station. Go up a hill. You'll see it on the left. Doe and oil's on the right. Look over the road. You'll see oil. Pop in. Come downstairs. Loads of music going on in here. What a fabulous um, location. And we're very grateful that they let us come in here and um, say some words. Indeed, we are very grateful. So thank you very much to Oil, and thank you for listening to this week's edition of the Salopian Mixtape with Michaela Wild and Simon Berry. If you are enjoying what you're listening to, then please, I beg of you, subscribe so that you get the next one as and when it is released. Done a fret, it will be there, Mon. Um, so you can also listen to us every Friday night on Shropshire Live Radio as well from 7 o'clock. So, you know, fill your boots with the Salopian Mixtape. Find everything you need to know at the salopianmixtape.com. The Salopian Mixtape with Simon Berry and Michaela Wilde. Bringing you Shropshire's best new music. You can get your music heard at the salopiamixtape.com <laughs>